All right, it is now the end of 2021, and I figured I'd end off the year with a video about my favorite tech that has come out in the past 12 months. On this whiteboard, I have the four major categories of all the tech products that I've reviewed this year, and I've chosen winners for each of them. Before you watch the rest of this video, go ahead and make your predictions in the comments below on which tech products you think are my favorites. So let's start with the first category, wireless earbuds. The runner up for this category is the AirPods Three. These released towards the end of this year, but I think they're an excellent pair of earbuds that rival the sound quality of AirPods Pro, while at the same time managing to be both cheaper and more comfortable. They definitely are still expensive and they have less features than AirPods Pro, which is why they didn't win in this category, but they're still a great choice nonetheless. Oh, and by the way, you can find the link to everything that I talk about today in the description below, as well as the link to my full review of it if you're interested. And that leaves the first place position. Now the product that won first place this year is not a product that can be considered best in class in any one particular way, but it's such a well-rounded product that sells for such a great price that it was impossible to give the win to anything else. The first place in this category goes to... Pixel Buds A-Series. Now they don't sound quite as good as some more expensive earbuds, and they don't have active noise cancellation either, but they're extremely comfortable, they still sound great, the design is beautiful, and they're like a hundred bucks. If you're looking for a pair of great earbuds that doesn't break the bank, these are for you. All right, next category, laptops. This was a tough one for me because there are a lot of great laptops out there that I just didn't get to try out this year. But nevertheless, I still did review a good many of them, so I wanted to include them in this video. The runner up for my favorite laptop of the year is the Galaxy Book Pro 360. This is a great laptop for a lot of reasons, but it's one of my favorites because of how versatile it is. It's got an Intel i7 1165G7 processor with 16 gigs of RAM, so it's fast enough for just about any work you'd wanna do on the go. It's got great battery life, and it has this absolutely fantastic 360 degree rotating OLED touchscreen. Plus it comes with a stylus. The only things I didn't really like about it was the finish of the laptop since it uh, kind of picks up fingerprints like crazy and the keyboard isn't really the best either. But other than that, it's definitely a great laptop if you're looking for a Windows based machine on the go. However, there's only one machine I could give the win to this year and that is the 14 inch M1 MacBook Pro. Apple has blown me away with their MacBook Pros this year. They're incredibly fast for a laptop, they have long battery life, best in class chassis and keyboards, and they have high resolution, mini LED, high refresh rate displays. What's not to love? Uh, actually, the notch. The notch is not to love, but it's still one of my favorite laptops of 2021, no question. Next up is the smartwatch category. 2021 was pretty sparse when it comes to big name smartwatch releases, but nevertheless, I do have my favorites. The runner up for this smartwatch category is the Galaxy Watch 4. Despite a few early bugs and annoyances, I think it's one of the best looking and feeling smartwatches that's been released this year, especially on the Android side of things. Samsung's partnership with Google made a huge difference when it comes to the availability of apps, and if you're looking for the best true smartwatch on the Android side of the fence, the Galaxy Watch 4 is probably the watch you're looking for. But it's not my favorite smartwatch. The winner that I chose for the category this year is one that I chose kind of begrudgingly grudgingly, to be honest. I didn't really want to give this watch the win for a few different reasons. I don't think this watch is a huge step up over previous iterations, and I think if you're looking to buy one of these, you should still probably buy an older version. In fact, there were so few changes to this watch this year that I didn't even bother to review it. In any case, I still think it's the best smartwatch currently available, and that's why I have given the Apple Watch Series 7, the win. Obviously, this is not the choice for you Android folks, but if you're on an iPhone, you'd be doing yourself a disservice by going with any other smartwatch. The Apple Watch is still not my favorite looking smartwatch, but in all other areas, it just cannot be beat. Build quality, display, performance, and battery life are all top notch. And if you're well immersed in the Apple ecosystem, this is the watch for you. I probably should have taken it off so I didn't spoil this category, but anyway. Series 7, it's pretty good. All right, it's just about time to talk about my favorite smartphones, but first, I need to thank the sponsor of this video, 
Intel. This is the Acer Swift 3 powered by Intel's Evo platform. And if you're looking for an affordable mid-range laptop for school or work, this is an excellent option. Not only does it have a durable all metal design, it's also extremely light for a 14 inch laptop at just over two and a half pounds. It's actually one of the lightest laptops that I've tested recently, and it's perfect for tossing in a backpack when you're on the go. It has a very long battery life too, thanks to the power efficiency of Intel's latest 11th generation processor inside. A full charge should get you at least nine hours of battery life and it has a quick charge feature that will get you another four full hours of life by plugging it in for only half an hour. Now you could use the power adapter that comes with it to charge it or you could use the Thunderbolt 4 port. Yes, this Swift 3 has a Thunderbolt 4 port and it's the most affordable laptop that I've seen that has one, allowing you to transfer files extremely quickly from an external device. You could use it to plug in an external display too, and if the display supports it, it will charge the laptop at the same time. The Swift 3 also has a Wi-Fi 6 wireless chip for an extremely fast Wi-Fi connection. I'm getting Wi-Fi speeds of around 500 megabits per second at my house, which is overkill for just about everything I do. I could stream 4K video while downloading games and uploading a video at the same time if I wanted to. This laptop has an instant wake feature too, so that whenever you wanna use the laptop, it's ready. As soon as you flip open that display, it's good to go. Upgrade to the Acer Swift 3 today and experience the power of Intel's Evo platform for yourself. Thanks to Intel for sponsoring this part of the video. Okay, so I'll be completely honest here. I thought ranking my favorite phones this year was going to be hard, but it took me less than like five minutes. Each of these four phones fell perfectly into each slot without much of an internal debate. Let me be perfectly clear here. I love all four of these phones, but there are good reasons for each of their placements. Let's start with the runner up. My fourth favorite phone this year is Samsung's Z Flip 3. This was the only place to put this phone because it is very near and dear to my heart. Like I love this phone, but the other three phones on this list are just, they're just better choices. The Z Flip 3 is a huge upgrade over the previous version with its great new cover display, a much more durable inner display and a better battery life. But even though it is such a novel and fun phone to flip open and use, it still falls behind in almost every category compared to the other phones on this list. The cameras aren't as good, the inner display is only 1080p even though it is a high refresh rate, and given that the battery had to be small and split in half to fit in each half of the phone, the battery life isn't as good either. It's a great novel little phone, but you can do better for the same amount of money. In third place is a phone that was released towards the latter half of this year, although it feels like it was released way earlier than that, given that it was leaked about a million times throughout the year. I saw more leaked photos of this phone than official photos from other major manufacturers. This phone is of course, the Pixel 6 Pro. The design is a bit polarizing, but I personally love it. It really stands out in a sea of samey phone designs, and the camera system of the 6 Pro is just incredible when it comes to taking photos. I personally found the battery life great, and the display hangs with the best of them too, given that it is both high refresh rate and high resolution. It does fall behind when it comes to recording video though, and even though Google makes Android, there are a few weird things about Android 12 that just takes the whole experience down a peg for me. It's a strong third place contender. Next up is a phone that I'm currently using as my main device. It's a phone that has the longest battery life out of any phone I have ever tested, to the point where I can get like two full days without needing to recharge it. It hasn't had the biggest update year over year, which is why I don't believe it deserves the first place position, but it's a close second. That phone is the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Apple gave the iPhone 13 Pro models several big upgrades this year, including high refresh rate ProMotion displays, the first in an iPhone, a better camera system with bigger sensors, and they gave us bigger batteries to improve the battery life significantly. Battery life is one of the main reasons I'm still using this phone today, along with all of the Apple ecosystem benefits that come from having a lot of Apple products here at the office for work. It's just the most convenient platform for me, even though that I prefer the Android platform for customization. The cameras for video are also nothing short of insane for something shot on a phone. I just uploaded a video about my new vlogging setup with the 13 Pro Max and the videos that came out of it just, they blew me away. But that takes us to number one, my favorite phone that has been released this year. This is a phone that came early, struck hard, and then set the bar very high for every other flagship phone in 2021. It had just about everything you could ever ask for in a smartphone, and if I wasn't so engrossed in the Apple ecosystem here for work, I'd be using it right now. My favorite phone of the year is Samsung's Galaxy S21 
Ultra. It's a phone that I have continuously come back to time and time again, and I've used it more than every other phone that I've reviewed this year. It does everything extremely well. Performance, software, battery life, cameras, display, durability, everything. It's not my favorite looking phone that would go to the Pixel 6 Pro, but the S21 Ultra is the phone of the year for me, no question about it. I've shot many videos about why it's such a great phone, and to put the cherry on top, it's almost constantly on sale right now since it came out like a full year ago. I've seen it go for as low as 900 bucks, and that's sure to go down even further as soon as the new version is released early next year. If you can get one for that price, I'd still say go for it. It really is an awesome phone. But that is all she wrote for 2021. I'll be taking a break to spend some time with friends and family for the rest of December, but I will be back in the new year feeling refreshed and fired up to bring you newer, better content. I hope each and every one of you have the best, most wonderful holiday season. Thank you so much for watching my videos, and as always, have a great day and see you in 2022.